Hey folks, welcome to G4G. I'm Napalm Dawn. This one could conceivably also be filed under the somewhat defunct side of my channel called Tim's Tech Corner, but as I do not have the tech in hand, we're not going to classify it as that. Today we're talking about the Google Stadia. So Google Stadia, in case you're not aware of it, is due out on the 19th, which is four days from now. 11.15, four days from now this thing is coming out and the basic premise of this video is to say that the Google Stadia should not even come out this year. It probably shouldn't come out until at least a half or a third of the way into 2020. So we're going to be looking at two source articles for this and that is Kotaku's discussion on it and The Verge's discussion on it. Think what you will about either one of the sites. The sites are being used simply for their data. Nothing more and nothing less. So if you remember Google Stadia getting introduced a while back, they basically came out and were like, it's this great thing. It's this cloud-based, quote-unquote, console or streaming service where you can be playing it on your laptop, put it down, grab your phone, go out to the train and start playing it back again on your phone exactly where you left off and everything like that and then come back in and maybe start playing it on your TV. One of the core components or two of the core components of this is the Google Stadia controller which is seen here. Somewhat of a hybrid of an Xbox controller, somewhat of a hybrid of a PlayStation controller, but where it really has some resemblances is to the old on live controller as it has some functions up here you'll notice this splotch of circles over here is actually the google assistant and that's the stadia logo which is similar to where the playstation uh button is on a playstation controller so there are things that are not going to be available when it launches and these are the things that were touted during those press conferences. And this is a result of an AMA that happened on Reddit uh, a while ago. And these are the things that are not coming to Google Stadia when it first releases. So first, Stream Connect, State Share, and Crowdplay. The main feature that allows players to join in on each other's games and make Stadia more than just glorified remote play like on live was way back when. Uh, I expect the first game with Stream Connect to launch by the end of the year. So that's a month and a half or so. And that's an estimation. That's not going to be live when the console launches. And what that means is that if there's a Twitch streamer, let's say playing Axiom Verge, a really, really good super metroid clone uh more super metroid than anything when you say a metroidvania but axiom verge is absolutely phenomenal when it was basically done by one guy tom something or other uh, the story is amazing the gameplay is very much a modern super metroid so if that game is a classic to you try axiom verge but so say a streamer's playing axiom verge on his google stadia if it came out. It's not a mentioned game, but we're talking hypothetically. And there was an ability for somebody to jump in and join him. That would be like the Stream Connect. Stage Share is the ability for somebody to create content and save the game where the player is in the world, the player's inventory, the player's times literally like making a save state on emulators if you've ever used any kind of a game boy emulator or snes emulator or playstation emulator like the old bleem you'll know emulators often have a lot of what's called state saves that's the ability to save everything about the game the way it is at that point in time regardless of whether or not it's a savable part in the actual game itself so if you are playing a pokemon game and you're in the middle of a battle and the phone rings, you can state save and come back to it. Whereas if it was just regular Pokemon, say, 
on this. Well, it, it's hard to say that because if you did that on an NDS or a Switch, you would just cut it off, and when you turn it back on, it would be there. But, like, if the batteries died or something happened, that wouldn't be the case. Y you you can only resume from the last actual save that the game supports. State save breaks that. So, state share, what it does is if I am playing Axiom Verge and I am just about to go to the last boss and I have a full inventory and full health and I'm like, okay, I challenge you guys to beat the boss as quickly as I do and I state save right before the boss, I can produce that. I can send it out to the cloud and you can pick it up on your Stadia and we would be on equal footing. Now I can understand that this technology is going to take a while to continue working on because that how does that explain what happens to your save again if we're saying axiom verge and it's like right before the elevator to the final boss what about your saves for the game if you pull in a state share how long do you get to play that state that other person's game what do you do to your own save when that happens, does it save it in an additional slot? It, there's a lot of things that I could see really going wrong with state share, and that's probably why it's not going to be live in 2019. Stadia's achievement system. The service will still record when you hit milestones and gains, but you actually don't get a toast for them or see them displayed until quote-unquote shortly after launch. Get used to this phrase because you're going to see it in a lot of shit over here. You cannot use existing Chromecast Ultras to play games. So, I'm going to lean away from the mic for a second. And I'm back, and I don't have my camera on for this. But I'm going to go ahead and take this little thing out of a pouch, and I can tap on the microphone. That is my Chromecast Ultra that I've had for some time, but haven't hooked it up yet. The thought was that... Um, when I had a potentially light and spare monitor, we might put a shelf in the computer room and put this up between my setup and my girlfriend's setup. And it would be a monitor up there that would have a Chromecast Ultra running on it. And if we both wanted to watch a same stream like a Gamers Done, a Games Done Quick marathon or BlizzCon, if it wasn't such a tire fire, and she lost interest in it, and I wasn't really the only one who had interest in BlizzCon 2019. Um, or, you know, just a Twitch stream that we wanted to watch, or a YouTube video we wanted to watch together. The monitor would be centralized up on the wall, and we would stream it from one of us to the Chromecast. Well, I've had this Ultra for some time. It's kind of been gathering dust, but when I knew Stadia was coming... I started looking around going, I wonder if I can just get the controller and not get the Ultra. Because I don't need the Ultra. I have one. Well, fuck me running. No, I would not be able to use my Chromecast Ultra. Because the only Ultras that are going to have the right firmware to run Stadia are the ones that ship with it. And quote, we will be updating the existing CC Ultras over the air otherwise known as OTA for tech-related people, soon after launch. Shortly after launch, soon after launch. Again, what does that entail? Is that days? Is that weeks? Is that 2019? Is that the first half quarter of 2020? We don't know what soon is to these people. So... Yeah, you're screwed there. Family sharing. While parents will be able to control what their kids can access on their accounts, multiple people in the same house won't be able to share games on the service until later on. Now, this sounds worse than soon after or shortly after launch, but it's a high priority we're planning to launch early next year. That's still three months worth. Early next year, early 2020 to me sounds like January, February, March. If it's not out by April, then it's not early in the year, but it sounds way lower than the other two. That's that's for sure. It, it, they're kind of saying that it's at least 2020. Don't expect that in 2019. Buddy Passes, which were part of the friggin' pre-order of this. If you 
got the Founders Edition of Stadia, it was supposed to come with buddy passes so that people can give somebody a three-month Stadia subscription to play games with them, but those passes won't actually be sent out until weeks after launch. This has become, like, is this Bethesda Stadia? Like, this, this is Fallout Stadia. This is Google Stadia 76. I mean, I could say it 17 different ways, but fuck, this is awful. I, look, I was interested in the tech when I was seeing this demoed and everything like that. Mostly because way, way back when, I actually got an OnLive off of eBay, mostly because I heard the controller was very good. And that um, it could be used in some other things for simply being a good controller. The day that I actually plugged in the online system after having it sit and rot with me for a little while was like the month that the online service got nailed. It like it wasn't it didn't exist anymore. I was like that friggin' figures. Uh, I still have the unit and I still actually have the controller somewhere, but um, yeah, I, I, I the tech could be interesting. And to be fair. In support of Google Stadia, the tech for OnLive, which is now about 10 years old, proved it could be done and it proved it could have been done in a different era of internet capabilities and streaming things. And, you know, they didn't have Cloud Xbox and PlayStation on demand and all that kind of stuff back then. And it still did it and it did it fairly well. It was reviewed fairly well in terms of performance. So... I am, I, I will admit, I'm a, being a little bit of a techophile in this, I am interested in the tech and wouldn't mind having it, but there's issues with that, and we'll get to that by the end of the video. The Stadia controller, at least for some people, everyone who pre-ordered Stadia will get their codes to sign into the service on the 19th, and will they be able to play on their phones by the way, Pixel only, Pixel 3 only, I do believe, which is a Google phone, so Google Stadia, Google phone. Uh, it's been said that Pixel really doesn't have a big part of the market share right now, so this is a very limited amount of people who can go ahead and play Stadia on a phone as compared to getting on the Android Play Store uh, you know, system emulators like a Game Boy emulator and a SNES and get one of those controllers with the claw grip on them. And now, uh, I mean, there is even this thing out there, which is pretty new. It's it's hard to find, certainly not on eBay yet. But there is the, the Razer Jungle Cat, which kind of turns your phone into a Nintendo Switch. As you can see from... This image over here, I mean, that is a lot like uh, a Switch, basically, is that the phone, that's a Razer phone in there, by the way, um, and that's all that works on the system, I do believe, is the Razer phone 1 and 2, but you, you squash your phone in there, and then it's basically like having a Switch, really, um... With this kind of a thing out there, and the fact that Google Stadia is only really working on Google phones at the moment, or really the Google Pixel 3, y you have other options out there. I mean, this one may be Razer specific, I believe. I don't think it works on others, but there are ones that do it like iPega and everything. Continuing, however, the package containing the controllers and the Comcast will have staggered shipping, sent out to the pre-orders in the order they were received. I ordered my Stadia Founders Edition in June, and my delivery date says the 20th or the 21st, Lee says as an example. Another person commenting on the AMA said currently they had an ETA of late November, early December. This guy who was doing the AMA said, Moving atoms is a bit more complicated and less predictable than moving bits. In other words, physical over digital. Uh, Doronichev said, The actual delivery date will depend on mail, truck, traffic lights are you fucking kidding me this is the war i would if i was this guy i would go back i would go into the men's room i would stare in the mirror and just start punching myself in the face 
like Jim Carrey in Liar Liar when he's in the I can't lie mode in court and he goes into the bathroom to beat the crap out of himself. C did you actually say this? Like, did you in 2019 actually say the delivery date will depend on the mail truck and traffic lights? The f what is this, Alaska in blizzard whiteout conditions? The fuck are you thinking, buddy? Like, this is horrible. The, the, the PR person in me wants to take him and just strangle this guy the way Homer used to strangle Bart in The Simpsons. Just, ah! This is such a fucking dumb statement. It, it blows my mind how awful this is. It, the delivery day will depend on mail trucks, traffic, winds, the barometer, rain, sleet. Listen, if Amazon can basically get something to your door before you're even done thinking about it, if your Amazon Echo crawls into bed with you while you're asleep and asks you your deepest, darkest desires, and it's at your doorstep in the morning when you wake up, you have got to be kidding me that you offered this as a reasonable excuse why some people get it earlier than others. That's laughable. Just talk about inventory or stock. Seriously. Be truthful. You are representing Google, which, and again, we're going to get to it, what that means when you represent Google, and you say something like this, you are being so disingenuous and untruthful, it is literally laughable. Like, it's, it's tears streaming down a person's face as to how funny this statement is. Fire this guy over that. That is utterly ridiculous. Depends on if the mail truck is driving. Look, I had a trip that I took several times uh, in the, the summer between my college, my the summer in college when it was between my senior year and extra semester of my senior year. It was 480 miles. Yes, if I drove 80 miles an hour, it would only take 60 minutes. Uh, 60, <laughs> yeah, 60 minutes. That would be good. If I drove 80 miles an hour, it took 6 hours. If I drove 60, it took 8 hours. Okay, that's a 2 hour difference, but it's still the same fucking day. Like, good god. So retarded. <sighs> so here's Verge's article on it. On the eve of the launch, it feels like the deck is stacked against Stadia. Skeptics wonder how it could possibly work with today's internet speeds and blowing through your cap. Uh, look, in other other countries don't have net as good as the U.S. in some respects. Caps are very big in like Australia and New Zealand and everything like that. And there are shitty companies like Comcast that throttle past the cap. But at least for me, uh, I don't I wouldn't necessarily really have to worry about a cap. But that is a fat data. I mean, to play Destiny 2 strictly from a cloud, that's a fat pipe. Uh you need critics speculate cloud gaming might eliminate the used game market and the modding scene and the ability to preserve games for future generations 100 percent true very valid criticism over there if you don't physically own the media you can't sell it when you're done with it you can never recoup any of your cost you know the five fucking dollars game spot GameStop will give you. It's like, here, buddy, here's a five and a voucher for half of a latte at Starbucks. I mean, we all know GameStop is just ridiculous with that. You could give them a perfectly unblemished box and DVD and some, you know, pimpled kid behind the counter go, I'll give you about 582 for that. All right. Potential adopters worry what might happen if it isn't quite as much of a success as Google hopes. Well, it's not even out yet, and it's looking like a tire fire. Google is infamous for walking away from products. Now, this is what's called the Google Graveyard. And this is the thing that scares everybody about Google. These tombstones are exactly what has been killed over the years um, for Google. So Dana Fried, a Google employee, posted this photo of a graveyard with headstones 
for reader and other now dead Google services, which is apparently set up in the main lobby of the company's Seattle campus. Like, I get that this is a joke, but it's not a joke to the people who cared about these. Google Plus, Picasa, Google Buzz I don't know about, Orcut, Google Reader, Google Wave. I mean, Google Plus I knew about, Picasa is a video or, you know, a picture service, but this whole thing of not sure whether spooky or just sad is absolutely a, a thing. Killed by Google. I mean, I Google a hat. Look at um, what's been missing. Uh, Google Hangouts, to a degree, is execution schedule late 2020. So that's going to go out. Hangouts on Air, Google Fusion Tables, Translator Toolkits, Bulletin, Daily YouTube Lean Back. That's um, an optimized version of YouTube for uh, specific Android TV devices. Google Daydream. That's huge. This was the competitor to the Gear VR service. G Suite Training, YouTube Messages, YouTube for Nintendo 3DS, Google Jump, YouTube Gaming, very popular on a lot of Android devices. Um, you could still get over to regular YouTube videos for it, but it was gaming-centric. Arrow. Uh, Google Earl Shortener, that's a huge one. Goo.gl was extremely big. The Inbox app, which was kind of nice. Google Plus, I mean, that's an eight-year run for that. Google Allo, YouTube Video Annotations, Chromecast Audio, Google Search Appliances, News and Weather, that's a, I had widgets for that on a lot of Android devices. Google Goggles, that's another eight year running thing. Uh, I mean, look at how, I, I'm not even at the halfway mark and I'm not done scrolling. The Nexus Player, which is an Android TV device from them. This is what is scaring the shit out of people. Picasa, 13 years. Image organizer and image viewer, like we said, 13 years. Unbelievable. And and we're only just hitting the halfway mark and or cut 10 years. Google TV. Quick office. I mean, this is a ridiculous amount of things that Google has chopped off over the years. And this is why people are afraid of Stadia because if I get Stadia and I choose this to be my platform for Destiny 2 and in a year it goes away and I'm part of a clan and I'm raiding and I'm like, sorry guys, I don't own the game anymore. I'm not allowed to log into it and play it. See ya. And they're like, well, there goes our raiding Titan. He's the best Titan we have, and he raids. Like, you're screwed. And that's what this whole section is about. If Stadia goes away, you're going to lose everything you have. Do you think Google's going to give you refunds for it? Potentially. They're more likely to get it from Google than anything else out there, but, uh, yeah. So the developer for Kine, one of their own channel like in their own channel a dev is afraid of it listen the biggest complaint most developers have with stadia is the fear that google's just going to cancel it so kind which is one of their exclusive games this is coming from the dev of it gwen frey the thrust of her argument was that devs shouldn't be afraid because the risk is worth it but it's not like google cancels every fucking thing they make well that list looks pretty damn big and it looks like they get three quarters of what they get involved with, they kill. I mean, it's like EA when they buy out a studio. Hello, Visceral Games. Goodbye, Dead Space. Fuckers. But perhaps the biggest blow against Stadia is how Google keeps proving the platform isn't ready. They spent the few months retroactively revealing that early adopters who paid about 130 are essentially a glorified beta test. And that's true. So it was announced on the 19th that they can instantly stream games, desktop, laptop, phone, swap between them seamlessly, blah, 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 stream to YouTube in 4K, summon the Google Assistant for game tips. So for your old bees out there, that's like calling up Nintendo Power for 2000 bucks a minute or whatever. Uh, they can relive exact moments. They share by clicking a link with CrowdPlay and State StateShare, um, offer craft 
cross-platform multiplayer between the PC and console, allow gamers to share their entire screen with teammates, Stream Connect, and deliver games with advanced graphics and physics that are impossible to offer on consoles today by combining the power multiple cloud services. In June, they opened up the pre-orders for 130 for the Founders Edition, including the Buddy Pass. But they reveal it's not a Netflix-style subscription like, say, the Xbox Game Pass. Google reveals a who's who of participating game publishers, but no killer apps. And they're further screwed by the fact that Destiny 2 will be a closed ecosystem in the middle of June and have no cross-platform multiplayer, which is something that Destiny 2 has been pushing away from is siloed play over there in july the wireless controller won't support wireless headphones for tv play on day one pretty good if you've got like the dad with the baby or the family member you know the 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 kid not wanting to bother parents uh, you know the husband with the wife or something like that the wife with the husband that's a little bit of a problem although look it's not as bad as it sounds because what consoles really even do have well they have it i don't see a lot of people saying they take advantage of it on october 16th google is caught adding the disclaimer that you will initially have to plug a usb-c cable into the wireless controller to use it with phones and pcs all right not the worst thing in the world this is not an expensive cable it turns out in October that your Stadia pre-order won't necessarily arrive on launch day because Google isn't shipping them all at once. Bad. Huge. Absolutely bad. We're in a society and time in which we're very addicted to what Amazon and other services do. This is super huge for them to be not doing it properly. Google Studio lead in October, Jade Raymond, admits it may be several years before a big game takes full advantage of the cloud. I don't necessarily know what this reference is. I mean, they're billing it as a game taking advantage of the cloud, but I mean, Destiny 2 is pretty big. In November, Google reveals that only 12 games will be available at launch. None of these, all of these are full price and require individual purchases, and they're not even really new, quote unquote. Destiny 2, the collection, you have to get the pro subscription tier for it. Drool. Uh, or Thumper, excuse me. Thumper, I don't know what that is. Kine, I believe, is an exclusive. Don't know what it is. RDR2 has been out for a while. Samurai Showdown has been out longer than some of you people have been alive. Trust me. A bunch of Tomb Raider games from Square. Tequila Works, Glit. Oh, this is the exclusive one. I still don't know Kine, but uh, Guilt is the Stadia exclusive. Ubisoft's Assassin's Creed Odyssey and Just Dance 2020. Oh boy, guys. Let's... Let's get a Stadia to get Just Dance 2020. And Mortal Kombat 11, again, not particularly new. Coming still in 2019, Borderlands 3. Okay, this one's new. Dragon Ball Xenoverse, Farming Simulator, whoop de fucking do. Attack on Titan 2, Football Manager, Final Fantasy 15, which has been around for a long time. And Darksiders Genesis, again, been around forever. And they're going to be full price. Uh, they're on sale on so many of the other systems. You could probably go on Steam and get a bunch of these for a half of what they used to be. I mean, maybe not 11 or Final Fantasy 15, but even Final Fantasy 15's really, really old. So here, uh, you know, some of the criticisms of cloud, cloud gaming are unfair. The idea that you can play the game entirely over the internet was proven nearly a decade ago. By OnLive and uh, Gaikai, which became PS Now. Uh, let's see. Blah, blah, blah. Google's existing internet infrastructure spans the globe, so they kind of got a leg up. Nearly infinite storage for Gmail and Google Photos. It's probably why p- potential competitors like Sony, Microsoft, EA, NVIDIA, and Valve are being so cautious now, rolling out early previews of their cloud services. So... The NVIDIA GeForce thing, uh, Steam Cloud, Xbox Cloud, Sony, yeah. Um, And they're tweaking their prices to be more reasonable or coming in sideways with cloud-adjacent features um, or striking mysterious deals, invite-only betas and everything. 
we're all waiting to see if the stadia will flop. It's all signs are pointing to 2019 is not going to be the year for this. Um, if you've pre-ordered it, you wouldn't be the worst thing in the world to maybe cancel that pre-order. Um, I watched the Yang Ye video on it. He said he's keeping it so that he can report on the performance of it. Again, I was interested in the tech. I was not a detractor right when I first heard it. But this is, as much as, you know, I've always been a open-minded person no matter what. Whether it's politics or gaming or people in gaming. If there's proof out there that is valid enough to sway an opinion or something... I certainly admit it and get on board with it. If I was very much a fanboy of Stadia when I first heard of it, I would certainly be convinced away from it now, especially a pre-order and getting this in my hands in 2019. It's going to be largely useless in 2019, especially if you're banking on the special features that make Stadia interesting as compared to others. So... I, I would suggest canceling pre-orders unless it's really important to you. And I certainly, to anybody who's been on the fence, my advice is hold off. Wait until 2020. And if you really... It's, so some people have said, what is the market for this? Who is this for? It's not for the casual person because they likely don't have internet good enough for it. And it's not for the hardcore because none of the features are going to be there. And none of the games are that great or that new. I want to answer that question. I think this is the kind of thing that maybe a family gets. Where they can control some of the stuff through family controls. And potentially can't afford or doesn't want to jump into a full-on console. If there was somebody out there whose kid was saying like i really want to play destiny 2 all my friends do it and blah 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 but they don't have an xbox or they don't have a playstation or maybe they're more conservative parents that have been afraid to pull the trigger on those kinds of things because they've heard terrible things on the net i mean you go back about a decade from now 11 years ago from now uh, Big Fat Phony was doing a video about a older guy and a young kid on his Minecraft server basically like carving swastikas in his fucking Minecraft server. Clearly what is a kid and what is an older gentleman? They, he didn't know if they were family or just internet buddies or something. But he like recorded them going around his Minecraft server. Like, and this is like what clearly sounded like a 10 or 12 year old kid putting Nazi paraphernalia on his Minecraft server. When you're a parent and you hear stuff like that, I don't blame you if you're like, oh, I don't really know about an Xbox for my kid. I've heard about those Halo and Call of Duty people. Um, this could be a way of getting your feet wet in a console and have it not be a $500 Xbox or PlayStation 4 Pro or something like that. This is potentially a cheap way of, of doing it. Similar to how Chromebook laptops are. You see where I'm going with this? Chromebook laptops are what people get when they're like, Oh, I don't really want to spend a lot of money. But hey, this looks cool. This is portable. It's a nice keyboard, nice display. And then they get it. And they're like, I... Oh, this isn't Windows. I can't... No, I can't install that. I, I can't install that. Well, I could watch YouTube. I could get on Facebook. But no, I... Uh, can't install that can't do office like i guess i could do office online or uh, maybe the google office products like sheets and document oh. what does this thing actually do think about it you've probably known somebody who got like a chrome os related thing and they've had it for like two weeks and have gone what the hell did i get this thing for what? i haven't done it because i've known about it but Probably somebody in your family who wasn't very tech maybe got it as a gift and then kind of realized he can't do shit with it. So it just kind of rots in a corner somewhere. That's kind of what state is going to be, especially if those parents like get it for their kids so they could do Destiny 2 and then suddenly he can't play with any of his friends because he gets to go to school on a Monday and say, guys, I'm sorry. And they're like, what happened? Did you get Destiny 2 for Christmas? Did, are you going to play with us? 
My mom got a Google Stadia. A <laughs> and all the kids are going to point and laugh. And they're going to be like, you got a Stadia. You got a st-. And then that kid's going to have to throw his lunch out. And he's going to have to crawl out on <laughs> the fucking recess field in the middle of winter in the 20 degree temperatures that we're currently having in the States. And he's going to cry under the monkey bars because everybody's laughing. You got a Stadia. You got a Stadia. It's going to be like Eddie Murphy when he was talking about his mom making green hamburgers on square Wonder Bread. Like he doesn't even have a round bud. He's just got ketchupy, drippy, green bread hamburger squares. And they're going to be like, look at you. You ain't got a hamburger. He's like, Ugh. yeah, that's that's Google Stadia for you, folks. So my advice don't get it in 2019, sit on it for a while in 2020, unless they really move in these shortly after launch, soon after launch categories over here. But it's not going to be good. And the thing is, if people don't buy into it soon and the press doesn't become good soon, it'll flop. And then it proves all the detractors right, that it just goes right into the Google graveyard. And that's what everybody predicts and is afraid of anyway. So... Let me know what you think below. Are you interested in it? Were you interested in it? Are you interested in it? And what do you think the future's going to be? Thanks, everybody. Have a good one.